Hey everybody, it is Ed. I am recording this video April 4th, 2023. Back on this exact date in 1973, 50 years ago to the date, Elvis, aloha from Hawaii, via satellite or via satellite, however you like to say it, was broadcast on American television, television, and uh, European as well for the very first time. Now, 50 years ago, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Now, at this time, I was just, wow, I wasn't even four yet. Uh, and I'm, well, I know that my parents definitely watch it. And I guess there's a very good chance that I probably did too. But if I did, I have absolutely no recollection of doing so. So with that being said, I thought it would be a good video to not only commemorate the 50 years that have passed since this first aired here in America for us to see it on television and, um, you know, show some different versions that I have in my collection. So we are going to start with an original release, and this happens to actually be a not for sale stamped promo. All right. And this has the uh, hype sticker, which would have been, I believe it was actually on the back and it covered this when it was initially released, uh, but they put it on the front and the quadradisc sticker, right? Because at this time they did not label it on the cover that it was a quadradisc release that came uh, shortly thereafter, which I'm going to show you. Um, but if we look inside, this is a die cut cover. When you pull the sleeve out, Elvis disappears, he comes out. And then here we have a very, very lame picture, in my opinion, where uh, is a bunch of uh, Hawaiian ladies and they are standing around a cardboard cutout of Elvis. Not even Elvis himself, but a cardboard cutout. I, I don't know. I always found that to be questionable. Um, but here is what the original release label looked like. This is where it told you it was a quadra disc. It's that nice bright orange label. And now I want you to keep that label in mind because as you are going to see in a matter of a few seconds, that changes. All right. And then this, oh, okay. You know what? I didn't really show this one yet. This one goes on the bottom. All right. And then this one, this was actually my father's release of the same album that we just saw, um, the Not For Sale. Uh, yeah, promo. And his hype sticker has a little rip in it. Um, and it's not attached to the cover. It's just loose in there. And again, if you look at the back, it tells us when the concert was recorded. And that was 12.30 a.m. Sunday, January 14th, 1973. Okay, now getting on to the earlier pressing also, but the later one is where they announced it was a quadra disc right on the cover. And this one still has the die cut. All right, but I'm going to show you the labels on this one are different than the original release, where it's on the regular RCA type label, but it says just quadra disc on the bottom as well. So there is that. All right, and then after that, we have. Oh, I forgot to uh, look for the cassette. Put those cassettes. Also, I'm still dealing with um, the remnants of the flood, and there's a reason why a lot of this stuff is still out here because I'm actually going to, you know, this, most of this stuff, of course, was the salvage uh, stuff. So I'm just done. I'm going to have a yard sale. So that's why it's still out here, and I'm just getting it organized for that. All right. And then next, what am I showing you now? Oh, is this okay? Yeah, I may as well show this one. Um, this is, uh, I believe, a UK release, or made in England, it says. Where does it say it was made? Oh, London. London. Um, here, on the bottom. RCA Limited. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. RCA Limited Record Division. RCA 
house. I can't read that. I bet it says London at the end. And, uh, oh, Curzon Street. And this one, um, it is not a die cut cover. It's a solid cover. So I'm not exactly sure of what year this was. I don't know if this is an original pressing I'm holding or not. So if any of my um, overseas uh, collectors can tell me um, by looking, here is your label. And yeah, I don't know what happened here, but oh well. Vinyl is very, very clean and nice though. All right, and I'll show you the second album as well. Um, so, again, it's, you know, again, it says 1973 on the bottom, but again, I, I, I don't know if this is an original pressing or a later pressing. So, again, if any of my uh, people over there in the area who are familiar um, have an idea, or if you need more information, let me know in the comments and, you know, I can get it to you. Uh, i.e. dead wax identification or whatever, if that helps. You know what? Maybe I could just do that on Discogs. Um, so maybe I'll do that. All right, but you know what? I'm dragging this on much longer than I wanted to. So let, let's um, continue on. All right, and now this is a different version. Uh, this is definitely a later pressing. You can see by the catalog number CP... I'm sorry, what is it? CPL2. 2642 it just says two record set this is not a die cut cover and it is um you know made in the u.s now it's funny because um it does have a copyright date of 1972 but you have to remember that this was uh recorded in january of 73 so they were pressed the, the covers before the albums came out i right, but this is a black label and it was not a gatefold either whereas the original releases were gatefolds. So the two LPs just came in this cover. All right, so again, that was CPL. And then I have this version, and actually this one is still sealed. All right, but this is uh, catalog number R, 213736, two record set. I'm not sure if this was a record club, edition or what but again it's definitely a later pressing it does not have the die cut cover and oh actually oh this one is a gatefold i think um no it it looks like it is a gatefold i was under the impression that this was actually a single cover but i guess i'm wrong all right but again it's still sealed so we have that. Um, and then the Friday Music version, which came out, when was this? I think this was 2013 this one came out. Uh, close, 2012. All right, so this came out in 2012. And this copies the second version cover where they have the song listings on the back. All right, but this one also came with a nice die cut cover. Um, however, the inner insert is not a sleeve. It's just a, you know two-sided single piece and it's actually on both sides which was nice uh but the records themselves just came in polyline sleeves but i changed them over uh to mofi type style but it followed the um label i think actually it really didn't follow either of the um rca release labels except for the darker orange on the initial release but otherwise Soundmaster on this, I think, is, is is really great. The Friday Music one, hard to come by now, though. Um, it was it was uh, done by Kevin Gray, and man, I think it sounds sharp. I think it sounds really, really freaking good. All right, um, let's go with CDs from here. We have, I believe, this is an original CD pressing of the concert, and it's on the black rca label oops and um yeah i mean you, you have your booklet and everything else so i don't really need to show everything on that all right and then this was a later pressing aloha from uh, hawaii and there we go all right and then this came from the 60 album box set the complete album collection 
So we have this one, and this is, they did a really, really nice job reproducing it with the gatefold, uh, but it is all on just one CD. And, oh, they use the quadra disc label, even though, I don't know if it's quadra disc, I think it's just in stereo. And the insert in this is actually really cool. Again, it's uh, very similar to the Friday music where it's just one, one uh, piece. It's on a, a sleeve, but it's double-sided. All right, so then, well, let's look at this. Now, this is what they call a video disc. It's not a laser disc, it's a video disc. And um, yeah, here you go, Aloha from Hawaii. I don't know how easy these are to find, but I can't imagine they're really readily available. Um, and then we have the Deluxe Edition. Deluxe Limited Edition, even though it doesn't say limited, it was limited. Um, but, you know, it wasn't, whatever, announced as that. Aloha from Hawaii. This was a three DVD set. No, I'm sorry. I lied. This was a two DVD set. I was thinking of the 68 special. That was three. Um, and it has a lot of uh, bonus footage on here as well. Um, him landing in the helicopter. Um, there's a press conference as well. There is the afternoon concert, oh, not the afternoon concert, the um, rehearsal concert and the main show, but in brand new edits. So really, really good stuff. And if, if you're a fan of these shows and you do not have this, I would definitely highly recommend seeking this out. Or if you want the bare minimum, um, there was also this version which came out, um, when did this one come out? 2000, I want to say 2008. I can't read it. It's too small. But regardless, it is a uh, bare minimum version of, of that deluxe one that I just showed you. And this has the complete January 14th, 1973 concert, the post-concert insert songs, and a photo gallery. So again, it's it's kind of bare minimum compared to the other one. And then, apparently, I don't know if this was actually released, is the Elvis 40th Anniversary Aloha from Hawaii Enhanced. And apparently this is a brand new cut, and I've watched this, and it's really sweet. But if there's an actual official release for this, I don't know of it. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as all the stuff that I have regarding the concert. Now, my personal thoughts on this concert, it's definitely one of my favorites. I think Elvis looks great, he sounds great, and... I really like a lot of the songs um, that he, he performs, <clears throat> you know. So we start off, of course, with the opening theme of Elvis, 2001. And then it goes into CC Rider. It's a strong version. Ronnie kicks butt on the drums on this one. The intro and the outro. Just perfection. Um, Burning Love is, is it's, it's amazing. It's just great. Something I was always i never really i don't know i just always thought the flow from cc rider to burning love to something i think maybe he should have done you gave me a mountain first and then into something but again whatever it's just a little thing with me um but i mean i like his version i was never really a huge fan of the song to begin with but i you know i do enjoy uh his version of it you gave me a mountain is um is you know i mean it's elvis and do he's doing you gave me a mountain and it was probably a lot of people's very first introduction to him singing that song and it's it's strong and it's great steamroller blues again just just a great great song and and uh, i really like the way that he lays into it my way what can you say a lot of people think that he should have never touched my way a lot of people say it's frank's song kind of like the way i feel about elvis doing if i can dream that nobody else should do that song but again that's my opinion but i i, I feel his uh, version of my way on here is extremely strong and it's 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 great you know love me all right it's it's elvis doing love me um johnny be good you know um not not a favorite of mine but again good stuff you know Good, uh, good performance i should say it's over definitely a favorite of mine on this album um i just i don't know what it is but that that song always always moves me and uh you know you got blue suede shoes which he just kicks around and has fun with i'm so lonesome i could cry another really good song um that that i enjoy hearing i can't stop loving you kick-ass version on here you know hound dog again kind of a throwaway it's less than a minute long and you know it is what it is. All right. What now, my love? Again, another one that always um, 
just sends a chill up my spine. I love that song. And apparently as a child even, because I, I have video, uh, audio of me singing along to it when I was six years old. So there you go. A uh, fever. I, you know, okay. It's Elvis having fun. Welcome to my world. I enjoy a lot. I like his performance. Suspicious Minds, of course, you can't go wrong. They do his introductions. Then you have I'll Remember You, which is, again, just phenomenal. You could, you, you just, you, you, you feel, or at least I do, and hear like the sincereness when, when he sings every, you know, word in, in, in these songs. It's just great. Um, all right. And then we have Long Tall Sally with a whole lot of shaking going on. You know, fine enough. Less than two minutes. American Trilogy. Phenomenal. Got nothing else to say. A Big Hunk of Love. A lot of fun. Great version. And then, of course, Can't Help Falling in Love closes the show out. And it was a strong close as well. So I I love the album. I love the concert. And um, yeah, it's it's been 50 years since it aired in America and in uh, Europe now. So I don't know, man. Again, just very difficult to wrap my head around that. But it's been you know, almost as long that um, he hasn't been with us. It's been, what, 45 years at this time. It, it's it's insane. It's insane. All right. Um, that's it. I, I went far longer than I wanted to on this video. Let's see if I even post it. But um, I appreciate you all watching. If you would like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you were there and you watched it, let me know in the comments. Let me Let me know what any memories that you have or, you know, if you uh, have any memories of the first time that you remember seeing it, I got to I gotta be honest with you. I, I, I can't pinpoint the very first time um, that I watched it. I know I must have been young. I know I must have been young. So that's really all I can say. Um, but again, I do enjoy it, and I think I always will. So we'll leave it at that. I appreciate you all watching. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Take care, everybody.